Hey guys, this is DIY Rob. Hope you're doing okay. So I updated my, or upgraded my laptop from uh, an i5 dual core to an i7 4700MQ quad core. And uh, this is an update video because the first, re first uh, problem that I met was my original power supply, which is a 65 watt power supply. It just couldn't power the, the CPU for high speeds. So as soon as uh, you wanted to edit the video and uh, you were using the quad core, the four cores, you could see the power supply go to its maximum and the computer was throttled down immediately uh, because obviously the computer doesn't want to burn the power supply by sucking out more power than it can give. So as always, when you start down the rabbit hole of, hole of upgrading stuff, you just keep ending up, you just keep buying stuff. First to buy was a 90 watt power supply and you can see the 90 watt, 20 volts and um, if you've ever looked for a power supply to buy for your computer you know that they are quite expensive, 20, 20 to 25 dollars maybe. So I got an idea to get a used power supply that I didn't care what type of connector it had because I was going to end up buying adapters. So this was a power supply I got for around um, five to seven euros. I just kept watching it. The guy wasn't selling it at 10. I offered seven, he said yes, and I went to get it. So seven euros for a 90 watt power supply was a very good deal. But since my original power supply comes with the usual new Lenovo rectangular plug and this old IBM probably a ThinkPad um, power supply comes with the round one. I then went on to AliExpress to get these adapters and actually while I was there I, I simply got a normal 2.5 millimeter jack uh, DC jack su uh, supply cable too because since I was going to wait for a month, I might as well just buy as many of, I, of them as I need. It fits in perfectly and then gives me a rectangular plug here. So I bought two more because usually when I buy stuff from China for myself, I buy a bit more of um, what I'm buying and then I put that on the um, Craigslist, our, our kind of local second-hand market here and uh, I'm able to sell and offset the cost of mine. So basically if I sell those, I get this for free. That's just the, the DIYer in me. Okay, so you can see how good this works for the Lenovo, but surprise, surprise, it works for a Dell laptop power supply too because this is the same 19.5 watts and 19.5 volts 3.3 amps so 65 watt power supply and Dell now comes with a similar round plug with a center pin in the middle it fits it perfectly not only does it fit this perfectly it charges my laptop too. So let's quickly connect. I have set up a plug here. Light. Okay, let's move to the computer. So you can see it's the Dell that is plugged. And now you can see charging. Plugged in and charging. And you can see here on the power supply, the computer is using 19 watts. So by getting the adapters that you want 
that you you want for yourself. Basically, the most popular power plugs are these uh, 2.5 millimeter jack style and the center pin style for Lenovo. Now, just like my original Lenovo charger, you can see how smoothly it enters. The adapters to enter smoothly and with no problems. So you, you don't ruin your, your DC jack inside your computer. Okay, so let me show you guys how long these are. Around 14 centimeters, five and a half inches. Yeah, 14, 13 centimeters, five and a half inches, more or less. And so this is how you're able to use various adapters as long as you can see how many adapters I have and power supplies I have here this is an old for an old Lenovo and you can see the 2.5 DC jack that goes with this simply plug You can see it's charging. No, it's not. Oh, I have to. I made the inline switch for that because I was tired of unplugging the laptop cord. But you can see that now it's charging. Plugged in and charging. And I'm taking just around 19.5 watts. And you can see the Lenovo light. So with these adapters, I was basically able to uh, try to get the full power of my new quad core by using a 90 watt ThinkPad adapter adapted with one of these cables. Now a more, let's say a more permanent solution will be to cut off from here and here and fuse and solder so you don't carry this bulk but uh, yeah I have all the tools to solder but I, I just found out that I, I didn't really need to do that because first then I'm going to have a, you know, um, a solder joint in the middle here that is always going to be bending and uh, no it, it fits just so well that I didn't feel the need to to do that solder job Okay, so let's see now, let's test, because it's very important that the pins here should be connected, the out, outer and the internal should be connected by around 500 ohms of resistance. And this is going to tell the computer that the laptop is being charged by a 90 watt um, power supply, and so it can go ahead and, and pull more. So. I've tested it and let's actually test together. Okay, so multimeter, resistance, ground, so the outer section, and the inner pin reads 560 ohms. So around this, this amount is the amount of ohms um, resistance that the computer needs to understand. The charger is 90, um, 90 watts, and so go right ahead and pull uh, more, than, more than the 60 watt, which is the base charger, up to 90 watts. Okay, so let's test now. And this video is just getting too long. I, I just can't make short videos, sorry guys. Uh, let's test now with a small stress test on the computer if it's actually going to pull more than 60 watts 
which is the wattage that uh, came with the original charger. Let me just clear up my desk. Okay, so I've plugged the 90 watt charger. You can see that from the computer we are charging. And just before I start the stress test, let me just quickly show you guys. You can see I bought these, uh, the, one, the adapter for the um, ThinkPad for the IBM charger at $1.05. And it was $80, 80 cents, US cents for the regular 2.5 millimeter to this converter. So incredibly cheap stuff and combined with the charger, with the power supply, it, it basically costed me less than that 10, 10 euros for everything. So let's quickly start a stress test. So let's stress the CPU. You can see it's ticking now. It peaked up to 66 watts because now obviously the computer has been throttled because we spiked up to 87 degrees C that you can see here. But you could see that spike. Let me stop it and start again. Starting now. 57, 71. And it spiked up, but obviously we arrived to 90 degrees C. And uh, the computer is throttled down to lower speed. Let's see what speed it's doing now. Yeah, it's just throttled down to 2.4 gigahertz, which is the base clock of the computer. So you could see that the power supplier handled giving out 70 watts with no problems, even through this very cheap adapter here. It's, it's not getting warm at all. Okay, so you could see uh, I found the solution for my over 65 watts requirement for the quad-core computer, but I'm now facing a mountain, which is which is the throttling due to heat. I will update in a, in a coming video how I solve this problem. I, I basically have to undervolt the CPU and allow it to uh, not take excessive amount of voltage and so give off less heat. And I'm going to have to do that. And also I'm going to have to modify the heat sinks and the cooling system of the computer because I noticed that the heat sink on this computer, which was made for an i5, just can't deal with the sudden burst of heat uh, given off by uh, the quad core when it gets to, to those very high speeds. And so, unfortunately, this is a problem that I'm going to have to deal with, and I, I may never actually get the maximum potential of this quad core. But what I currently have now is already, let's say, two thirds of the way to where I want to be. Each video that I render on the i5 that did it in six minutes, it's now done in uh, three minutes 30 with the i7. So almost half, almost twice as fast. And so um, now I'm just going to have to play with uh, some of the cooling uh, on the volts in the CPU and other factors to, to just see how much I can get to to the maximum potential of the CPU, even though, unfortunately, on this old Lenovo, I, I may just never be able to get over 3.1 gigahertz on all cores, which is what this computer is, um, this CPU is capable of giving off. Okay, guys, so let me just cut the video here now, and I will update um, when it comes to software on the voting and uh, trying to keep the heat down. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.